What's up chess fans, in this video I'm going to try to provide some guidance on the most common chess questions I receive. I made a community post a few days ago and in total received over a thousand questions. I've put them in this video into chess improvement, chess specific, and then miscellaneous chess questions. And I'm trying to do my best to separate it into beginner, intermediate, and advanced. Let's jump into it. Kicking things off in the chess improvement section, I'm putting these two questions into one. How do I get better and what do I focus on? Well, how do I get better is a tricky one because if you're an intermediate or an advanced player, you really have to diagnose the problem. I mean, do you have a good opening repertoire with the London system, but then for some reason you're getting into time trouble and losing a lot of games that way? You know, uh, maybe you're playing with the black pieces and you're getting a lot of King's Indian defenses, the opening is going well, you're outplaying your opponents, but then you have a blind spot for some sort of tactic. You've got to drill into what exactly is going wrong in your games, and then you have to figure it out. Maybe you have to change your opening repertoire, but you have to continuously try to find what you're good at, put that aside, and try to tune everything up. However, as a beginner, it's hard to get better. <laughs> I mean, you're going to struggle in the beginning. Chess is an intense learning curve. So what you should do as a beginner, focus on basic checkmate patterns so you know how to finish a game, look for simple hanging tactics, one move tactics, not yet going into combinations, and simple openings. Just get developed, take the center, castle, and then get going from there. It's a little bit harder uh, to give you a you know split of time when you're an intermediate uh, or an advanced player. But definitely openings and tactics are, are something you must focus on. And then your end game conversion, you have to start adding a few more layers, but that's generally how you get better at chess. And I guess what I'll add for this part is who is there to diagnose your problems? Well, obviously you can train with someone, you can train with a coach, but if you don't have that, join a community of chess fans. For example, the Gotham City Discord, there's a link somewhere in the description below. There's folks always talking about chess, giving each other feedback and advice and pointing people in the right direction. As far as digital resources for openings, whether they're free or paid, you've got to figure that out for your own budget and then ultimately make a decision. So. Hopefully that helps you. Let's jump into the next question. A lot of you also asked me this as a follow-up. How much time should I spend doing puzzles and studying openings versus playing? And also if I'm playing, what time control should I be playing at? I always say 10, 15, 30 minute games, definitely, uh, because that allows you to implement everything that you've learned. Unless you're like 1800, 2000, at which point Blitz is actually also okay. Three minute games, Bullet is usually something you should avoid in general, but you should do something that you find fun. As far as a percentage split, I don't know. Everyone's a little bit different. You need to be able to internalize what you learned, like in the opening, go and play a few games. What I'll say here, set yourself a quota. Five games in a day, win or lose, doesn't matter. 5 and 0, oh, don't keep going. 0 oh and 5, don't keep playing. And also don't get you know too emotionally invested in these games. Set a quota, five games, 10 puzzles correct, and that's it, keep it rolling from there. Another question that was asked so many times, but in different ways was, should I solve a lot of puzzles? How do I even find puzzles in games and so on and so forth? Well, take this puzzle uh, from a game that I played against a mod of mine, a longtime supporter, Dr. Chess Gremlin. You know, he's, up, he's a 1400 rated player. And in this position, um, I had just played knight e7, looking for the move knight to d5, hitting his bishop, and potentially, you know, setting up, uh, excuse me, some squares for my bishop to escape. So using a tactical pattern sequence of checks, captures, attacks, something I talk about a lot in the tactics solving guide, he realized that after a4, my bishop is just stuck. And if I move a pawn, he's going to be able to take and do some damage on the dark squares like the bishop coming here. I thought I had actually tricked him with this move, making him go to a5 and then pinning him. And he found a fantastic move here that froze the position for me and made me lose a piece. He just played backwards with the knight. And he realized that this bishop is frozen and it's got nowhere to go. So here, uh, I had to sacrifice a piece. I mean, I could have done something like this, but this is still very bad as I lose two bishops for the rook. So it just goes to show you that even against a strong player, tactics are in the position, okay? How do you find them? Checks, captures, attacks, always. That's like 95% of the time how you are going to find a tactical sequence for either yourself or for your opponent. This last question in chess improvement, I get asked every day that I'm streaming in a million different ways. I am this old and I am thinking to hit this level by this time. Do you think I can do it? And if so, how do I do it? Okay, first things first, if you want to learn chess, just learn it. 
just learn it. Don't set yourself a goal of becoming an FM, an IM, a GM, you know. The point is, if you want to play the game, join a good community of people and just go for it. Don't think that you're wasting time, but at the same time, if you are in a position financially, don't pour all of your money into chess thinking, you know, somehow you will absorb more information. Take it on a budget-friendly approach uh, and learn slowly, pick some skills up, and if you're a professional, a working professional, skills don't translate between the job that you have and chess, okay? Chess will deconstruct everything you thought you knew about intelligence, allow yourself to make a lot of mistakes, and practice, and you'll get better. The next section is called chess specifics, because a lot of you didn't just ask me questions about chess in general, you asked about very specific things, like pawn play and pawn breaks. I could make a much longer video on this, but I'm just going to give you a couple of examples. Uh, starting out with this one, where in a strange opening against the subscriber, I had full control of the center, uh, and a knight on g6 like this can be very frequently targeted with a flank pawn, which is exactly it's what I did. I played h4, threatening to trap the knight. I played h5, and then one more instructive little thing here. Uh, I used pawn play in the center of the board to play against his dark squared bishop. So I traded off my dark squared bishop. I put two pawns on the dark squares. Uh, that opens up my light squared bishop as well. And then later in the game, I used my pawn as a barrier on move 16 to control the movement of this knight. So this knight is kind of boxed out by these two. Uh, but of course, pawn play affects other pieces more positively, like this move did open up this bishop. Uh, one more thing about a position uh, with regards to pawn play is something like this, where both players have castled on opposite sides. Uh, there's only been one piece traded, it's been a pair of dark squared bishops. So when you have opposite side castling, another knight on the edge of the board, there you go, a5, a4, but also that move is just kind of preparing a direct assault on this king. And my opponent played this unfortunate move and actually just straight up got his knight trapped on b3. A big question I also got was about pawn breaks in general. What I can tell you about pawn breaks is that they need to advantageously affect your position, whether it's improving the position of a bishop, a knight, a rook, opening an attack, and not opening the position too much for your opponent, that's a good starting point for pawn play. The next question I got a lot of was, when do you reroute your pieces, and how do you evaluate piece trades in positions where it's not so obvious? So I took this game, where I had the white pieces in the recently concluded Title Tuesday tournament, this was the position from the opening, and here I realized I couldn't make any progress on this side, or in the center, so I played Queen E1. I brought the queen back, and I hit the C3 pawn from where I would get access to the other side of the board. That's how you reroute. You improve your position. My opponent struck back with c5. I took here, and the question is, should I trade? No, because then I'm just pinning myself, right? That's not good. So instead, I played queen c6 check, which actually forces my opponent to play the move king to e7. And it looks like everything is okay. My queen can't do any more damage. I can't go here. So the second reroute, how do I get to this king? Correct. I know you got it. Bishop c1. And that's actually a very annoying move. So my opponent had to play queen h5 and check and make that little square for his king. I still cannot get in, and I really want to take this pawn or this pawn. Well, which piece is the glue of the position for the person playing with the black pieces? This, right? It's this. So bishop c5. And that's how you do it, right? You, you, you want to find a way to logically break through and continue to make progress. So you offer a trade of the dark squared bishops. There you go, not all trades are the same, and this was an example which combined both rerouting and trading. I ended up losing this game, but we're not going to talk about that. The next question was also extremely popular. How do you make a plan in a position where it's not so obvious? And look, that is frankly where all of us struggle in chess, the middle game. In an equal position, you should be familiar with the plans that you play from your own openings. That is so important. So, take this position I played against the subscriber. This was... Random Sicilian in a closed position, I know that the plan is to attack the king, because I don't have the advantage in the center. Queen e1. Black's best plan here is to counterattack on the queen side. That's just something that I know from studying a lot of games, which you should do. He didn't do that. He played bishop d8 and rerouted his bishop to b6, looking for a check. But after king h1, well, there's just nothing here for black. So after playing h6, because he didn't quite know what to do, well, I have this. So who did I open up here? The bishop. And all of a sudden, Black's position collapsed. Actually, he, he made a big mistake. He played e5 and hung the h6 pawn. Now, I know there's a big rating gap here between myself and my opponent, but that's how you make a plan. That's just a very simple example of 
Go for an attack on the king. If that's not possible, what's next on the list? Make a trade that benefits you. Look for pawn play. Look for a breakthrough on one side of the board. We're all in this together. Chess is hard. The last chess specifics question drives me insane because I get it so much and I don't understand why it's get, it gets asked. What are your thoughts on this opening? I play this opening. What are your thoughts on it? Look, title players know and appreciate almost all decent openings. The question is, do you like it? Do you know it? Does it fit your playing style? How are your results? You can gauge whether or not the opening that you're playing is good. You should not listen to a random titled player. Even if I tell you don't play the Sicilian defense, what if you have a 90% score with it? Okay, so keep playing it. You should just find something that makes sense to study. That's the way you should approach this, okay? So stop asking this question. Pick something. If you know it and it's going well for you, then play it. If it's not, switch it up. If you've made it this far, this next set of questions is just going to be kind of miscellaneous and starting off with emotions and chess, you know, like, how do I recover from making a horrible mistake? How do I recover from, you know, losing a lot of games in a row? How to deal with tilt? How to deal with anger? If you need to ever step away from the game, it's always helped me, okay? I have quit chess for years of my life and come back and enjoyed it with a fresh start. What I will warn you not to do is to get into the tilt. Don't turn it into gambling. Don't play more because you're losing. And try not to play more when you're on a hot streak because when you lose, it's going to hurt. Your rating is going to fluctuate in puzzles, in blitz. But to kind of narrow that down a little bit, try to set yourself a quota and balance it like that. And I guess what I should add here is like, it's okay to be angry. Just don't let it make you too angry or too upset. If chess is getting bad for your mental health, take a break. All right, take a break. I think this next question is extremely important. How much of a computer should you be using in your chess study? Do not use one when you play live games. To study with a computer after a game and fully, fully get every concept out of it is difficult. Most likely you will need to get some human input for some of the suggestions. I'm sure many of you have seen computer suggestions and go, what the hell does that even mean? Try to put it into human words. Uh, there's actually an engine website now out. I don't know it off the top of my head that's out there that tries to break it down into human form. Join a community of chess players, okay? That'll help you out a lot. And do not play practice games against engines. Engines do not play like 99% of the people you're going to be playing against. They do weird things and then they'll randomly just lose all their pieces. Play humans. And if that brings you anxiety, join a trusted Discord server group of folks whom you can practice against. And the last question I'll answer, just for fun, is how are GMs so good? And, uh, well, the answer to that question is I have no idea. I'm just an international master, but I'll tell you my experience. I've probably played close to half a million chess games in my life. When you can get to that level, let me know. Uh, and if you're still not an international master, well, maybe it's time to play some checkers. If there's any questions I didn't answer, drop them in the comments below. Like the video, share it with a friend. I thought this would be helpful and you guys made this possible. Thank you so, so much for all of your support on this channel and take a look at some of my other videos. Maybe you'll get something out of them.